Okay, before starting, I would like to thank to uh, Abide Workshop develop, uh, develop, uh, organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my work. Uh, I am Ari Reza Sassani and I am doing my PhD under supervision of Eric Bousquet from uh, University of Liège and Jorge Iniguez uh, from the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology. The work that I am going to present uh, is, uh, is done in collaboration with, uh, with uh, Andre Caviglia Group uh, from University of Delft, and it is an ultra fast magnetic phase transition in this frozen ferrite. So, uh, we know that nowadays there are different paradigms to improve the technology that we have uh, at reach. Some people uh, are discovering new phenomena, and from that, they can, they can make new technologies. On the other hand, there are some people uh, working on uh, making devices on smaller scale and uh, by integrating the, these uh, smaller devices into um, larger devices, they, they improve the per performance. But uh, some people are working on uh, also uh, improving the uh, performance speed of devices. And uh, what we are presenting in here uh, belongs to this class in, in which we are trying to improve the performance of the device uh, uh, by, use, by using ultra fast laser pulses. Uh, so before going further, I would like to give a uh, small introduction to uh, ultra-fast lasers. So uh, ultra-fast lasers are laser, laser pulses that are very compact in time domain, uh, in femtosecond time scales. And this technology nowadays uh, is being used by different groups for different, uh, with different goals. Some groups are using it to, to study dynamics of uh, materials uh, at very short time scales. Uh, while some other groups are using it to uh, tune and enhance mat material properties and uh, already enhancement of superconductivity, switching ferroelectricity, and also uh, ma making phase transition from insulator to metal have been achieved. Uh, but we are in here, we are going to focus on inducing magnetic phase transition using this, uh, the ultra fast lasers. Uh, and uh, there has been some work already on, on magnetic phase transition using laser pulses, but uh, the mechanism that we, we have uh, been able to uh, induce in here is, is different and uh, it has uh, one to two orders of magnitude uh, smaller uh, time scales compared to uh, previous results, previous mechanism. So uh, we have studied this proton ferrite with, with uh, uh, ultra fast lasers uh, of 200 femtosecond uh, 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 impulsive source. And the, the laser field strength was more than 10 megavolt uh, per centimeter, and the sample was uh, single crystal. Uh, okay, this frozen ferrite uh, is, has a PNMA structure uh, and it has two magnetic sublattices, this prosium and iron. Uh, iron orders at very high. Uh, in, uh, temperature, it has 650K annual temperature, and it orders in gamma four uh, below 650K. Uh, in gamma four, uh, spin has main direction, uh, mainly directed in uh, X direction with G type order, uh, which means all six, all six neighbor has uh, antiferromagnetic order. And it has also a weak ferromagnetic order due to the allogen schemory interaction. Below 51K, it orders in gamma one phase. And in this case, uh, spin, order, uh, spin rotates to Y direction. It doesn't have any uh, weak ferromagnet. Uh, and this uh, reorientation is quite fast. Uh, and in the whole uh, temperature range from 650 to down to 4.5K, the dysprosium uh, sublattice is a paramagnet. And uh, it, it just interacts with, with the uh, iron uh, sublattice. Uh, we have already made uh, some model for, for to study this material. In particular, we used uh, extended Heisinger, Heisenberg model to study uh, SMR orientation and magnetization, magnetization reversal in these materials, in which we, we in this Heisenberg model, we included the exchange, uh, the allergen schemoria, and uh, single ion anisotropy. And uh, by using this model, we show that the, uh, the interaction between the two sub lattices is the uh, mechanism that makes this, uh, this uh, spin orientation happen. 
So let's move to experiment. So in the experiment, what uh, what is done is that the, uh, the laser pulse is uh, by, by, by using the laser pulse uh, uh, tuned with the infrared uh, phonon mode frequencies. They hit them, uh, they hit the sample, and then by exciting the IR mode, they they have been able to change the ma magnetic energy surface and then make a transition from uh, antiferromagnetic or gamma one phase to gamma four phase. In this case, the, the, the sample is in gamma four, gamma one phase at its low temperature, lower than 51 K. And when they hit the, hit the they hit the, the um, uh, sample with, with the laser, they change the, the energy surface uh, and then make a transition to weak ferromagnetic uh, order. Uh, further studied in this in this uh, sample showed that uh, when they when the sample is uh, excited using the IR uh, frequency uh, uh, compared to some higher frequency modes, we have a shift in the uh, magnum uh, mode of this this sample. Uh, in, in gamma four, it, this shift is in uh, it, this shift is blue. Uh, it, it goes to higher frequencies, but in a gamma one mode, uh, it goes uh, to uh, lower frequencies. And if we, uh, and by studying uh, the the uh, frequency of these uh, these uh, magnum modes in two uh, a spin structure, it's been shown that indeed we have a softening or hardening of the uh, this magnum modes uh, depending on the orientation of the spin. Uh, and by further study, it's it's proved that the the mechanism in this in this uh, Phase transition is not heat. It's not heat dissipation, but there is something else uh, that we needed to uh, study. So then we used. Uh, then uh, we asked the question, "What is the mechanism?" Uh, to answer this question, we turned to the density the functional theory and we used Avenit code, and it's uh, projected uh, our augmented with, uh, wave uh, implementation. And we use the F electron and valence and DFT plus U, and we use the occupation matrix control to to make sure that we are uh, reaching to the cor correct ground state of the F electron system, F electron states of the dysprosium. And to calculate the magnetic interaction in these systems, uh, since we had F electrons, it wasn't uh, easy to to do uh, total energy calculation. Then we used the Green's function method as, uh, as implemented in TB2J code and calculated the exchange, uh, the magnetic interaction in, uh, in our studies. By, by calculating the uh, phonon frequencies uh, for, for two of the uh, two uh, representation of the phonons, because the laser uh, propagation direction is in uh, Z direction and it's, it's polarization in AB plane, so it only excites the uh, B1U and B2U modes by, uh, I, and here I'm presenting the uh, frequencies of the, uh, the different modes, uh, as well as their effective, uh, effective uh, charges. Uh, and as we can see, the laser can excite uh, the highest uh, frequency modes. And, but uh, we know that uh, only exciting these modes cannot create any phase transition uh, but there was uh, some uh, uh, lower frequency oscillation in, in, in the experiment. So uh, this, uh, okay. Then uh, we considered the nonlinear phonics as a possible uh, mechanism that can create this phase transition. So what we did was to uh, use uh, this equation as uh, as a as a mechanism that can explain. Uh, the the coupling between the two mo two modes that we are we are interested. So in here I'm presenting the coupling between IR mode uh, and Raman mode uh, and uh, up to fourth order. So we are having uh, Raman uh, IR mode uh, frequency uh, uh, frequency and uh, IR mode uh, amplitude. Uh, Raman mode frequency and amplitude. A higher order Raman mode and the coupling within the two modes and higher order uh, coefficient to to fit the the equation with the, the dense functional calculations and they calculated the uh, coefficient for uh, two of the modes uh, are shown in here 
since the uh, strength of coupling is proportional to inverse of frequency, higher or higher uh, frequency modes were not uh, that important, so we, didn't neg uh, we neglected them. But uh, but these two modes uh, are having quite large coupling with the uh, with the uh, infrared uh, active uh, uh, mode. Uh, uh, this coupling changes uh, the, the coupling that we show the gamma coefficient co coefficient uh, changes the uh, potential energy surface for, for the AG mode. Uh, in here, I, I'm showing how uh, it changes the uh, uh, IR uh, uh, mode uh, oscillation can change the uh, potential energy for the Raman mode. And as we can see, uh, uh, oscillation of the IR mode uh, changes the pot potential energy surface and uh, Kind of uh, freezes the uh, AG mode quasi statically in the structure, and uh, this this uh, quasi static uh, uh, as, uh, condensation of the mode uh, uh, for these two modes are similar. They have just uh, changed. Uh, I mean, they they just rotated by an angle degree with respect to each other. Then we used the uh, equation of oh, sorry. Then we used the equation. Oh. Then we use the equation of motion to, uh, to see uh, what is the effect of laser on these two modes. And in here, I'm showing the, the effect of uh, the oscillations of uh, two AG modes as a function of, uh, as, the, as, it's, as it hit by, by the laser, and then uh, oscillation of the IR mode. And as we can see, we, we have a, a shift in the minimum of the AG mode, a, two AG modes with respect to uh, equilibrium. And this uh, persists uh, up, to, up to one picosecond uh, time scale. And then using this, uh, we, we, we calculated the exchange interaction between uh, dysprosium and its eight uh, neighboring uh, iron atoms for AG1 mode and AG2 mode, AG mode. And since uh, these are not very clear, what would be the final in, uh, change in interaction? We sum these, and here I'm, I'm showing the sum of the exchange interaction change uh, with respect to uh, AG1 and AG2 modes. And as we can see, uh, this, this change can uh, can uh, create the enough uh, potential potential difference to make this phase transition. Two minutes left. Uh, sorry. Three minutes left. Uh, okay, it's the last slide. Uh, to conclude, uh, we have shown that uh, by using laser, uh, the high, uh, high frequency. Okay, did we again lose someone or is it me? Nope, lost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is a problem indeed. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not even on the same side, so it's not a local connection issue. Okay, in this case, there was just the conclusion remaining and the questions, of course. So shall we stop here and maybe let's wait one minute and then if he doesn't reconnect, then we stop. This time I don't have direct uh, access via, via phone. <laughs> okay, maybe you can... Okay, share it well, I'm going to say that he needs to reconnect. À la conclusion. Ah, here he is. Okay. You have to share again your conclusion and, and redo the conclusion because we didn't hear it. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, just to conclude, we, uh, we have shown that it is possible to excite the Raman higher frequency Raman uh, IR mode using laser, which then couples to Raman, uh, Raman modes and quasi-statically freezes these modes in the structure, which change, which change the magnetic potential in the surface and make this make trans, uh, phase transition happen. And it is quite very fast uh, and it happens in uh, five picosecond time scales, which is one to two orders of magnitude shorter than the previous studied results uh, mechanism. And thank you for your attention, and I would be happy to answer any question if there is any. Thank you very much. I haven't seen any question in the chat. Okay. The... I may have missed 
Interesting. Oh. Can I? Yeah, you heard I missed something. How did you estimate the coupling parameters in the nonlinear phononics thing? Uh, By hand, you did finite differences. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did finite differences. Yeah, my question was about. I mean, you, there's a reference. There was a reference on your last slide. Is this? Uh, uh, yes, that's that's the. Yes. It's published. Yeah, that, that's the public. That's the published of the, the this presentation that. I gave. You should you should advertise your publication. Don't forget to mention <laughs> that. <laughs> Is what I told him each time, but he forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.